see us now. Good morning and thanks so much for joining us this half hour. I'm Ashley Garrett. Let's get straight to that certified most accurate forecast this morning with meteorologist Melissa Hall. We've been talking about it all week long. That cooler weather is finally here. Yeah, we were talking about <laughs> how we were working for the weekend in this forecast. Yes. <laughs> yeah, heading out the door this morning. Big change from yesterday morning. We had some fog yesterday morning. We had mild temperatures. Well, today a lot of things are different. We've got clearer skies. We got a few clouds out there, but those will clear through the day. And we're going to have sunshine, but we're not going to have that heat. Yesterday we got into the upper 80s. Well, today we're starting in the 50s and 60s. That wind is going to stay out of the north today. Now the humidity, it's still there, but it's going to be decreasing as well. And those daytime highs, like I said, they're going to be decreasing. We're not going to see temperatures in the 80s for anybody. In fact, out of the coast up at Hilton Head, you're only going to climb about four or five degrees from where you are right now. You're at 65, some of the warmest temperatures we see. You'll barely make it to 70 today if you do. Everybody else, you can see those cool temperatures back sleep close to the upper 40s. You're hanging out at 50 right now. Well, we'll get back into the low 70s for a daytime high, all thanks to a cold front that pushed through. You can see the cloud coverage down to our south, but here it is just the crisp, cool temperatures you're going to have today. We'll warm back into the mid to upper 60s by lunchtime, and this evening we'll be in the low 70s. Now, Ashley, it's going to feel a little cooler because we do have that wind coming in out of the northeast. That's actually going to cause a little bit of some choppy conditions out over the Atlantic, and we're watching another storm to potentially get named out over the Atlantic. So a lot to get to. We'll talk about the temperature trend and how long this lasts and everything going on in the tropics. Hearing your full forecast. Melissa, thank you so much. Well, the Bullock County School District is making an appeal to the Georgia Department of Public Health to get its new quarantine policy in place. According to the DPH, the school district's new policy allowing students and staff to stay in school even if exposed to COVID-19 does not comply with current guidelines. Anyone exposed to a positive case wouldn't have to quarantine if they could prove they were wearing a mask at the time. Superintendent Charles Wilson sent a letter to the department saying guidelines should be revised to allow this sort of policy policy in order to make things easier for the community. Once we, we were able to, to sort through and allow the options for students of, of the school models virtual for those who don't want to come back and then those who can come back. The biggest challenge, of course, there were so many people that were ready to come back and were just happy to be back. But the biggest challenge then was, depending on the school, as to you know how to you know allow for social distancing. Bullitt County School Board will revisit this issue at its next work session. That's October 22nd. Also making headlines, West Chatham Elementary School will be closed for a week after several staff members tested positive for COVID-19. The Savannah Chatham County School District says there's no indication that those who tested positive exposed any students to the virus. For now, students will learn virtually while the school is being deep cleaned. The school will notify parents of a reopening date by next Thursday, we're told. South Carolina has two new programs dedicated to helping businesses get through this economic rut created by the pandemic. They'll start accepting applications this coming Monday. The Minority and Small Business Relief Grant Program will offer funding between $2,500 and $25,000 to qualifying businesses. The Nonprofit Relief Program will offer aid between $2,500 and $50,000. South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster says these new programs target sectors that were not getting as much help before. With the federal programs that have, have been implemented by the Department of Employment and Work through, Workforce and through the Department of Administration, there are a lot of small businesses, minority businesses, as well as some nonprofits who have not been able to access any help. So this program is aimed at them. Well, the grant applications for both programs are open from October 19th through November 1st. The Hilton Head Island Bluffton Chamber of Commerce and Low Country Score already have plans to offer help in applying. In-person help will be available at the Chamber's offices October 19th through the 30th from 10 a.m. until noon. More than 8 million Americans are now battling the coronavirus and close to 219,000 have lost their lives. Health experts are concerned as we head into cooler temperatures with cases increasing across much of the nation. ABC's Karina Mitchell has more. Cases here in the U.S. have increased by double digits this week. That's according to an internal memo from the Department of Health and Human Services obtained by ABC News. Deaths also on the rise. More than 218,000 Americans now dead from the virus, including 51-year-old veteran and EMS first responder Jerry Jones. One day earlier, his 41-year-old sister also lost her life to COVID-19. 
And I had to call Jerry's mom and tell her that her child didn't make it after the day before she had gotten the phone call about her daughter not making it. Two blows, two devastating blows. Those were their only children. But new hope in the race for a vaccine this week. Pfizer saying they could have one ready for emergency authorization after the third week of November. In the meantime, health experts are warning we need to think twice about family gatherings. Dr. Anthony Fauci speaking at the Johns Hopkins University Health Policy Forum yesterday. We're going to start doing a lot of things more indoors rather than outdoors. At least 38 states battling a rise in cases, 39 with an increase in hospitalizations. Yesterday, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie urged others to wear a mask after he didn't while on the president's debate prep team and at that White House Rose Garden event, later testing positive and spending seven days in the ICU. I let my guard down. Leaders all across the politics, sports, the media should be saying to people, put your masks on and be safe until we get a vaccine that can help to protect us completely. Six days out of the hospital, Christie says he's still not feeling 100%. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And in your Commitment 2020 News Now, President Trump makes a stop in Macon, Georgia for a Make America Great Again rally. The president made promises to protect the Second Amendment and advocated for his platinum plan, which he says will benefit the black community. The president also spoke about Thursday night's NBC town hall, criticizing the moderator. In Savannah, it was like her face, the anger, the craziness. Uh, I mean, the craziness last night. And I said goodbye. I said, great job, Savannah. You did wonderfully. Good job. But we got very high marks for that last night. But they thought it was very unfair that... That sleepy Joe who cannot answer a question. He really can't answer a question. Well, Chris Wallace protected him with me. Well, Senator David Perdue of Georgia also spoke at the rally yesterday. He's now facing backlash, though, after he mispronounced Kamala Harris's name during his speech and then followed up with a joke. But the most insidious thing that Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden are trying to perpetrate in Bernie and Elizabeth and Kamala or what, Kamala or Kamala, 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 I don't know. We turn now to more Commitment 2020 news. The three weekends left until Election Day and the candidates are fanning out across the country. President Trump and Joe Biden are focusing on swing states crucial to ensuring victory. Ike Sadiaz is in our Washington bureau with a look at the state of the race. All eyes on swing states right now as the president and Joe Biden make their final push. Battleground blitz, President Trump I love being with you. and Joe Biden hitting key swing states in the final weeks before Election Day. The candidates making stops in Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida and Michigan, addressing the COVID-19 pandemic and health care. Don't listen to the cynics and angry partisans and professional pessimists. We are Americans and we will prevail. Trump still determined in the midst of this pandemic, he's still determined to destroy the Affordable Care Act. Millions of Americans already casting their ballots as national polls and some state surveys show Biden leading the president. Biden at this point will be very content to run off the clock. And 18 days from now, we're going to win the state of Georgia. President Trump holding a rally in Georgia last night, signaling a competitive race in the traditionally red state. That would be one of the states that we think is just safe, right? That it would be safely Republican and there would be no concerns here. This weekend, President Trump is also traveling to Michigan, Wisconsin, and Nevada. Biden will be in North Carolina tomorrow. In Washington, I'm Ike Sadez. And fundraising numbers show Joe Biden and Democrats brought in $383 million last month, while the Trump campaign and Republicans raised $247 million. Time check this morning at 639. Coming up, find out how to speed up your internet connection. Hi, I'm Jeff Rawson. Coming up on Rawson Reports, how would you like faster Wi-Fi speeds for free? Yeah, now I got your attention. We're all working from home, right? Everything's on. The phones, the laptops, the iPads, the gaming consoles, Alexa. We have the simple things you can do around your house right now to pump up your internet speeds. Rawson Reports, next.